distance, departing from the attachment to one's own selfish purposes and parting from attachment to clinging or grasping to a set view that one may adhere uh, to be the supreme of all views. So uh, in the gist, it is therefore showing how in order to uh, stay and stick onto the path of the Dharma and according to the spirit of Dharma, therefore one needs to learn whether one is studying or whether one is meditating or whether one is expounding the Dharma, they should always fit according to the spirit of the Dharma, uh, which therefore, which are not tainted uh, by any of the four uh, traps or rather attachments. So, with regard to the uh, parting from the attachment to this welfare, even though people may uh, take precepts, or moral precepts, but it is important that moral precepts do not go in the process of, of, uh, of adorning and embellishing these lives and uh, necessities or, or name and reputation, so to speak. So, for instance, anybody who upholds a vow, either that of an Upasaka vow, such as the ten virtues, ten vow holders, or those of the uh, Sramanera, or novice, or female novice practitioner, the set of the 36 vows, as well as the vows of the fully ordained monk, consisting of 253 vows, any vow holder of these three kinds, whether of the Upasaka, or of the Sramanera, or of the fully ordained ones, that it is important that whatever vows they may adhere and preserve, that they are not done uh, in, with the intention for one's attachment to this life's name and status and, uh, and any other form of attachment in order to honor, in order to acquire any worldly things for this life's welfare and maintaining those moral precepts certainly is against the spirit of one who is not attached to this world, to this particular life's affairs. What is stressed here is the importance of the importance of using one's moral precepts as the foundation for any further development of meditation or any other practices that may follow. Solely depends how, how solid a foundation of moral precepts, whether of a lay person or as a fully ordained monk or non holder, it is important that they all uh, uh, endeavor to consolidate a moral basis upon which, only on a basis of which, all other study and meditation practices can only uh, progress. <laughs> So if, if the, there is a, a true practice, genuine practice of morality, then whatever follows, such as study and contemplating and meditating on the teachings that one has studied, learned, and if one profess to practice them, unless there is that moral basis upon which all of the other uh, seeds of listening, studying and meditating, contemplating can only uh, germinate, without the fertile soil or foundation of moral precepts, whatever one may do, even one may be studying, even when one may be meditating, uh, whatever one may do, it, they become what is called artificial uh, practices, would not serve bountiful results of enlightenment. Oh, so therefore, uh, Trakma Gyalzen uh, reiterate the importance that you better put aside or abandon whatever study, meditation and contemplation you are doing uh, for, uh, for it, uh, if 
Zone doesn't have the uh, moral precepts. There, why isn't it better to abandon this artificiality of one's mode of practice? Tadini Thomas Sudmishuinis, the Greek then Thomas Sudmishuinis, 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 Megajimus, <laughs> And <laughs> I'm Should you can see it without the swimming evidence. to elaborate further on the topic of the morality, uh, Dr. Gyanza goes on to uh, show the distinction between the artificial morality and genuine morality. So first of all, he explained how, uh, how indispensable uh, morality is uh, in, in general. Uh, for instance, he says, even though practice of morality is is one we can't, one could, one one couldn't do without, either for the purpose of attaining higher rebirth or to ultimate liberation. Uh, but her, this is so indispensable that if one who practices, even as a lay person who upholds the five or ten precepts, if one actually maintains and practices those moral precepts genuinely, accordingly, without hypocrisy, that very practice of morality will become the root cause of attaining higher rebirth. For instance, a person to seek and wish to attain a rebirth again in the future lives, it is said that one would not possibly uh, can attain such a rebirth as this without uh, acquiring meritorious deeds uh, in this very lifetime. So if, if any morality, moral precepts of the ten virtuous deeds were adhered and practiced in this life, that becomes the root cause of attaining higher rebirth. Let alone, uh, uh, not only that, uh, the, it becomes the cause, or it becomes like a ladder upon which one will be able to climb to the actual citadel 